Hi, it's Mr. Buckingham and this video is on cell membranes. One of my favorite labs to do that's pretty easy is to extract DNA from strawberries. What we use is some shampoo and mash it with the strawberry juice and the shampoo will actually destroy the lipids that surround each cell in the strawberry. And those lipids, once they're destroyed, they will start to release the DNA that's in our, uh, our nucleus. So we can just write DNA. And then what happens is we can actually extract it physically and we can see the DNA come out. So in this video, we will talk about selective permeability. So what goes in and what comes out of our cells. And so when we destroy the lipid layer around those strawberries cells, it prevents the cell uh, ability to, to keep things out and keep things in. And the membranes also have what's called the fluid mosaic model. So there's going to be a lot of objects embedded in the membrane to help keep things out and keep things in. And then we'll talk about the structure and function of those objects. And one of them is going to be called the phospholipids, which we got to our macromolecules unit. And they're going to be amphipathic, meaning that they're going to have both hydrophilic and hydrophobic parts to them. And we'll talk about the small and uncharged molecules are able to go through those phospholipids. There are also proteins in this, the structure of the membrane, and they're going to be used mainly for transport either active or passive. And if they are going to be passive transport, large and charged molecules are not going to be able to go through. But if it is active transport, then large and charged molecules can go through. And there are other things, cholesterol, glycoproteins, and glycolipids embedded in the membrane. And then finally, we'll talk about plant and bacterial cells. And they have a different system for keeping things out. And those are going to be the cell walls also for protection. So all of these different cells will need to be able to specialize in something in order to function in, let's say, this organism, the river otter, which is one of my favorite animals of all time. And they need to be able to have certain molecules come in and out, especially glucose is needed for energy in our cells. And all of these cells will look surprisingly different, but they will have some sort of membrane structure around them in order to make sure that they can keep the inside of their cell the way that they want it. So if we zoom in to this eukaryotic cell onto the edge of it, we'll be zooming in on the membrane and there are the building blocks of the membrane, which is going to be the phospholipid bilayer. So bi meaning two, and so it's going to have two layers. And the head parts of them, the phosphate head, is going to be hydrophobic. I mean, sorry, hydrophilic. And the tails are going to be hydrophobic. And that will make the middle part no charge because there's a lot of carbon and hydrogen in those tails and the outside is going to have a charge and so that's going to prevent certain molecules from going in what can go through so if there's a, a carbon atom out here let's say co2 actually and co2 wants to get past here it can go through because it's going to be a non non-charged molecule. And these, these phospholipids are pretty fluid and they're going by each other. So that's going to be called the fluid mosaic uh, model, which we'll get to in a little bit later. Later. The next thing we have is the channel protein and they're just going to be embedded right into the, the, through the entire bilayer and things can go in and out depending on what the protein is and whatever needs to get in. So water is a, an example of that can get through a channel protein and it water cannot diffuse directly through the lipid bilayer because it is a charged molecule. 
So it does need a channel protein in order to get there. So molecules that are a little bit larger are able to do that. Then we have what's called a uh, glycolipid. So if we split that word apart, glyco meaning a carbohydrate and lipid. So the lipid is going to be embedded with the fatty acid tails and the, you can see little tiny hexagons that's gonna be the carbohydrate part. So the glycolipid is important for molecules or, or larger molecules trying to gain access to the cell. So it'll attach to the glycolipid and then the cell can start engulfing whatever that molecule is. The next one is going to be a glycoprotein and the glycoprotein just a carbohydrate attached to a protein embedded in the lipid bilayer. And this one is important for cell-to-cell -cell recognition. So if there's an invading body, a glycoprotein can recognize that invading molecule, I'm sorry, invading uh, virus or invading bacteria and can ignite a response in a cell. And the other ones are, are steroids, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, cholesterol, which is gonna be a lipid. And those are going to be embedded in the fatty acid tails and they're gonna actually regulate the spacing in between all of those lipids and it is super necessary because if we get cold or the cells start to get cold themselves the lipids will start stacking on each other and then that means that's going to prevent some of the trans transport from happening if we get too warm or the cells get too warm then those lipids are going to start to pull apart and if that happens then we could have some damage to our cells and then too many things are going in and out. So cholesterol will, will regulate that fluid model. And a lot of people think, oh, cholesterol is the worst thing ever. Yes, if you have too much of it, but there is cholesterol found in our lipid bilayer. So all of these things together can prevent or allow molecules access to the cell or out of the cell. So certain molecules will, let's say, want to go in. Well, these stars, it looks like they were able to go in probably because they were a small, non-charged molecule. But it looks like the pink ones might be too large or they might be charged and so they can't get past. Or let's say if we want to get rid of some uh, molecules, looks like the yellow ones were able to get through and the green ones were inhibited. And in one of the other videos, we'll talk about transport and what exactly can get in and out uh, depending on their size and their charge. And so this diagram shows just what exactly can get through and what actually will need help. So the last two are going to need active transport and we'll get to the specifics of that in a later video. And that's gonna require ATP and some energy to open and close some proteins, for example. And we can see that CO2 and O2, some of those gases are able to get through the membrane super easy. So if you ever wondered, if you take a deep breath in, you take in some oxygen and you breathe out, you're breathing out CO2. Well, when you take a breath in, you're allowing your cells to get oxygen and it's super important for cellular, cellular respiration. And though that O2 can get into the cell very easily because it can go, go across the lipid bilayer. So this is the fluid mosaic model and all of these molecules are able to move around. They're not in a fixed position. Cell walls act a little differently, but they effectively do the same thing. So for plant cells, a big reason why they have a cell wall is so that they can keep or retain water. So if you've ever wondered if you don't water a plant, it starts to wilt. Well, the plant needs enough water inside of it. So this vacuole inside this blue blob, the water will start to push against the cell wall and it will create this pressure. And so the plant will, will have some sturgidity. Um, the cell wall also will have a ton of cellulose and that cellulose will help the plant stand up. And if you have ever eaten a lot of plants, it's really hard for us to digest. So that plant cell has a pretty good structure for its cell wall. And that can prevent certain things going in and out of the plant cell. Bacteria cells also have a cell wall and it acts a little different and it's made 
up, not of cellulose, but a different compound. And it will aid in the protection of the bacteria and keep things in and keep things out as well. All right, so go back and see if you can fill in the missing items. Thanks for watching. Bye.